Coming up next on Valley News Live at 10, when it comes to pets, Dilworth says no to additional limits. Plus, the Twin Cities under a curfew at this hour, and leaders are hoping for no additional unrest. And North Dakota lawmakers come to an agreement on future mask mandates. Valley News Live at 10 is next. This is Valley News Live at 10. We are back to the wintry weather. Some of us seeing more of it than others. Here's what our sky cam looks like in the Hankinson area. The snow that's sticking around is now blowing in the wind. Here's a shot along 13th Avenue South in Fargo. Travel between now and the morning could be dicey for some. Let's get the very latest from Hutch in our first alert forecast. Hey Hutch. Hello, yeah, it has been snowing as we've gone through the day up in northwest Minnesota. That snow band shifting to the south. Here's a look at uh, North Dakota Department of Transportation camera showing some snow covered roads in the Binford area on Highway 1. And the radar shows that they're along Highway 200 from Carrington through Cooperstown, Finley, out towards near Mayville and Page seeing a heavier band of snow. It's a little quieter now near the international border as a break is taking place there and out to the east near Bemidji, northern parts of Hubbard County, north of Park Rapids towards Clearwater County seeing a little bit more intense band of snow. We have a winter weather advisory in effect until tomorrow evening for much of the northern half of our viewing area. Take a look at the freezing line. It's making its way all the way down to the south. Any places getting rain will quickly see that transitioning to snow. I'll have details on how much you can expect by your morning commute. We'll talk about the afternoon drive home, which will be more impacted by several inches of snow for some of us. Details in just a few more minutes. Okay, thanks, Hutch. Authorities tonight released the name of the officer who shot and killed a 20-year-old black man on Sunday in Brooklyn Center, Minnesota. Officer Kim Potter has been with the department for 26 years, that according to the BCA. Also this evening, people honored the death of Dante Wright by bringing flowers and candles to a vigil in Brooklyn Center. Wright's family was there too, mourning the death of the young man. The vigil was held an hour before the start of a curfew for the Twin Cities area. The vigil was held at the intersection where Wright was shot in the chest during a police stop. And the county medical examiner has classified Wright's death as a homicide. Tomorrow, it's the defense's turn in the trial of former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin. Elise Preston has the latest from New York. And my brother was killed May 25th. George Floyd's younger brother, Felonis Floyd, was overcome with emotion as he told jurors about the close relationship Floyd had with their mother, who died in 2018. He was just kissing her and just kissing her. He didn't want to leave the casket. And everybody was like, Come on, come on, it's going to be okay. The spark of life testimony came ahead of a use of force expert who says it was unreasonable for Derek Chauvin to hold Floyd down for more than nine minutes last May. He was not a threat of harm to the officers, um, even to the extent he had physical ability. He didn't have much in the way of opportunity to assault or harm the officers. Cardiologist Jonathan Rich echoed previous medical testimony that Floyd's heart stopped due to low oxygen levels caused by the officer's actions and not drug or underlying health conditions as the defense suggests. If um, Mr. Floyd had simply gotten in the back seat of the squad car, do you think that he would have survived? Had he not been restrained in the way in which he was, I think he would have survived that day. Earlier in the day, the judge refused a defense request to sequester the jury in light of the police killing of 20-year-old Dante Wright Sunday just outside Minneapolis. I understand the argument from the defense that this now puts them even more uh, ill at ease. But I think sequestering them would only aggravate that. The defense is expected to start its case tomorrow as officials ramp up law enforcement presence across the Twin Cities. Elise Preston, CBS News, New York. Also today, the judge ruled the passenger who was in the car with Floyd last May will not be testifying in the trial. The defense hasn't said if Chauvin will take the stand. The sheriff of Hubbard County says one of his deputies was attacked by two large dogs over the weekend. The sheriff says the deputy was serving restraining orders when the dogs, one described as a bulldog mix, the other as a pit bull, aggressively came out of the home. 
After being bitten, the officer tased one of the animals. The second dog then bit the taser and pulled it from the deputy's hand, causing a severe wound. The deputy was forced to shoot the animal to stop the attack. The deputy was treated at a local hospital. The dog was euthanized due to his injuries. Dilworth leaders said no tonight to a proposal to limit the number of pets in a home. The proposal generated a lot of comments on our Facebook page when it surfaced late last week. Valley News Team's Aaron Walling was there when the decision was made and brings us the story. It was unanimous. Dilworth city leaders on a 5-0 to zero vote said no way to additional limits being placed on pet owners. The proposal would only allow up to four animals in any one home, four dogs, four cats, or a combination. Mayor Chad Olson says that the limit went too far. But setting the maximum number, I, just, I think it's it's an overstep. In terms of the welfare, of, if you at the welfare of the pet, are they being taken care of? If they are, fantastic. That's exactly what we want. And if they're not, then because there's so many, then we can step in that way. It's like the ad is there's no bad dogs, just bad dog owners. Um, it, it, I don't think setting a limit on how many pets each household can have is going to rectify that. The proposal was said to have surfaced after a recent incident where a woman was found to be living with 35 cats in her van. The mayor dismissed the notion, saying he doesn't make policies on any individual person. I have a tendency not to set policy for one person or one instance. Um, and I think this has far-reaching ramifications, and I, I do, I think it, it, it's an overstep. Uh, I think it's too broad and too limiting. Um, if, if the pets are well taken care of and it's not a nuisance and the, the owners are good and the pets are good, um, I'm okay with that. Another reason for updating the city's pet ordinance was to fall in line with neighbors Fargo and Moorhead. In Dilworth, Aaron Walling, Valley News Live. One update to Dilworth's pet ordinance was approved, calling for the use of microchips in pets. That will replace the current system of annual pet licenses. A new version of the anti-mask mandate bill has been approved by the North Dakota House, meaning it's on its way to Governor Doug Burgum's desk. Last week, the Senate amended the bill. The original bill denied anyone the authority to institute a mask mandate. But the new version only restricts the governor and the state health officer. Cities, counties, schools and businesses can still enact their own mask mandates. This is a great compromise if there ever was one and I would hope that we would recognize that we've the, 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 we've really come at that halfway point. Because of that compromise the bill will now head to the governor's desk. In the past the governor has vetoed bills that reduce his emergency powers so this bill could face the same fate. Electronic pull tab machines are becoming more popular in North Dakota, which means the state is receiving more in gaming tax revenue and lawmakers are deciding where that surplus should go. A bill passed the House that would establish a place for gaming revenue to flow into the charitable gaming operating fund. It would also alter the way gaming is taxed from taxing total gross proceeds to adjusted gross proceeds. It eliminates the taxation of credits and unifies tax calculations for all game types. So in other words, Mr. President, it's a tax on the actual earnings and not on phantom dollars. An amendment which placed a moratorium on charities saying they cannot install new ETAB machines was thrown out before this bill was approved by the House. One person is dead, an officer injured following a shooting in a high school in Knoxville, Tennessee this afternoon. Officers responded to the school after reports of a man who was possibly armed inside. As officers approached the man, shots were fired. A male was pronounced dead at the scene while another was detained for further investigation. The officer who was shot is listed in stable condition tonight. That school will be closed for two days. Backpacks are racking up chiropractor bills for some students as access to lockers remains restricted at schools in the metro due to COVID-19. And now parents say they're looking for a compromise, hoping to allow time for students to pick up and drop off their supplies. I mean, even that would help just so he doesn't have to carry everything with him all day. Local school districts say while there are no plans to change the locker policy this year, rules could be much more relaxed this fall. FEMA says it's getting thousands of calls about its new funeral assistance program. Families who lost loved ones to COVID-19 can apply for assistance with funeral costs up to $9,000 per burial. To be eligible, the death must have occurred in the U.S. or its territories. The funeral had to have occurred after January 20th of last year. 
COVID-19 or COVID-like symptoms must be listed on the death certificate as a cause or likely cause of death. Applicants must be U.S. citizens or a legal resident, but the person who died does not have to meet those requirements. Stick around later on Valley News Live at 10. Students helping students. What's being done to make sure kids dealing with mental health issues get help? For much of our Monday, the snow fell in earnest up near the international border. This photo from the Wales area showing snow covering the ground. It is a first alert weather day today and tomorrow. Your hour by hour forecast is coming up right after this.